Hey everybody, welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we read manga together. And we archive manga. Archive. Archive, because we're archivists. We gotta make ourselves sound more historian? important than... No, not historian. Because historian just studies history. Archivist preserves, preserves, history. preserves history. history. Yeah. So, we're here today to talk about preservation of manga keeping your manga looking good on the shelf which is a, one of the reasons why people buy physical manga and um so some people might be asking why are we doing this video right you can go pretty much every manga tuber has done their video on how they keep their collection pristine and all that and look i ain't here to start some manga tube beef but these videos are not very good. But, but, not very good. but I'm not going to say they suck, but they're, they're they're leaving a lot out. And look, well, there's a difference I'm not gonna, between what I do and what's archival. Maybe, but look, I'm not here to start YouTube beefs. I'm sure these manga tours give some good advice, but I think a lot of them are lacking. They're lacking a lot of science. They're lacking, or they providing solutions that aren't quite the silver bullets that they think they are. So, the goal of this particular video is we're going to give a 360 view 360. On, on storing your manga, some of the science behind it. We're going to have some hard truths and tell you why some of this is pointless. And, uh, and we're going to give some suggestions on better ways to do things. And I will even point out the mistakes that we make, because we're not perfect archivalists ourselves right so that's kind of the point of this video so hopefully you'll walk away from this knowing a little bit of science knowing a little bit more about how to take care of your manga um, but let me throw a disclaimer out there real quick uh, I did a lot of research for this video I tried to look at peer-reviewed academic studies as well as you know YouTube on the shitter which is like you know what a lot of people consider research. I did all the different types of research. All the different types of research. <laughs> but that said, I'm not I'm not a chemist. I'm not an archivalist professionally. Uh, I'm just an amateur. I dabble. So dabble. there's going to be a lot of room for the uh, um actuallys uh, down in the comments. So I threw it out there. This is all generic, hand wavy, not super scientific. We're going for Bill Nye the Science Guy level. We're going for, uh, what's his name, Neil deGrasse Tyson level of science here, right? We're not going no. for... They're both actual scientists. Yeah, but we're not going to, like, PhD. We're not defending this thesis in front of a committee, right? That is true. So, okay. So, I want to say the main catalyst for me wanting to... Oh, actually, let me back up. Let me back up back ever up. so slightly. After we're done filming down here in the basement... We're actually going to go film on location, <laughs> aka in our in, in the Weeb family uh, bedroom or the Weeb parents' bedroom. Daughter Weeb is old enough to have her. Own I room. think you are. Never mind. What? Anyway, um, and we're going to one of the points that we discussed. We're going to give an actual example of it. I think it'll be a good treat. It's going to be at the end of the video, so you got to watch the whole video, or just jump at the timestamp below. Or just so watch whatever. the whole video. Watch the whole video. It'll be yeah, your, it'll be, it'll be a treat yourself treat at, the, at the very end of the video. Okay, so the catalyst that made me want to do this is I was watching um, some videos um, about manga storage and all that, and one person said, "Yellow pages are a myth." Well, that's obviously not in, in manga. Then if you take the proper care of your manga, your pages will never yellow. Uh, and I'm like, that is bullshit. I mean, they can yellow more slowly. Sure, but they will yellow. And we're going to get into why here in a minute. But so I, this video kind of set me off. And I'm just like, no, it's not a myth. This happens. And then they were, I, I don't think this particular manga tuber was, but I've seen a lot of manga tubers talk about bagging your uh, manga. So We're going to start with some hard truths. Well, kind of, yeah. This is the lead up to the hard truths. Uh, we have some examples. Uh, I've been collecting for almost 20 years. Mommy Weeb has been collecting over 20 years. We have manga that is that old, right? I think a lot of the manga tubers out there are newer to the hobby, which is good. I'm glad, Big Tent. Glad more people are in it. 
not going to be in. They're not going to have that long term anecdotal evidence that we have. So let's talk about baggies and yellowing, okay? This is uh, Crying Freeman Volume 2. You can tell I've never read this because it is still wrapped in the original factory seal plastic because it's got. It's Kazuo Koike. There's going to be some titties Parental and killing. warning. Tiggo yeah. bitties. Tiggo bitties. Man, look, he almost showing his junk on the cover, right? So this has been wrapped in plastic its whole life. Yeah, zoom in on that, uh, daughter. Do a comparison. Yes, that is yellow. Yeah, let's compare it to Snow White with the Red Hair Volume 13. Just came out like a week or two ago. You mm -hmm. see the difference? And it's been in that plastic its whole life. Your baggies are not going to stop yellowing, okay? It's just the reality of it. All right, we good with the zoom? Yeah, yeah. Back in frame. Okay, so that's what kind of got me... Uh, wanting to properly educate the community on what you can and can't do uh, with archival stuff. And we're going to talk about baggies later, but I just wanted to show you. You don't have to zoom in on this. You can, baggies, see, it. You can, you can see it. Baggies do not prevent yellowing. Okay. Before we go into the science of yellowing, let's go ahead and hit those hard truths. Hard truths. Hard truths. Hard truths. Even, Look, even I don't you can hit. Them. You can uh, hit the dislike button here, but I'm going to give you... Or the, just skip this part. Or skip this part. I'm going to give you the straight dope. Even I don't want to hear them. Most avid collectors, and what I mean avid collectors is you maybe buy 20 manga a month. 10 to 20 manga a month. You cannot read that fast, most people. Mommy's like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. <laughs> <laughs> or like, uh, uh, Daughter Weed doesn't get that because uh, she hasn't seen Short Circuit. It still sounds funny. Yeah. But uh, most avid readers will only ever read their manga, if they're lucky, one time in their whole life of owning that particular manga. Now, you'll read your favorites a few times. Don't get me wrong. I know some people are already calling me, I read Chobits a hundred times a year. Okay, you'll have your one or two titles. If that's exceptional. But look at this. I've never even read this. It's still in plastic. How long have you had it? I think I got this when I was in college. Oh, so. you had it that one? Yeah, and I haven't read it. So, like, over 10 years, and I haven't read it yet. So, that's a hard truth. You're that only, is one that I need to read, too. But. You're only going to read your manga, if you're lucky, one time. How how pristine does it have to be for you to read it one time? That's all I'm saying. It's a hard truth. Well, uh, if you want to resell it at some point. You know, it's a good thing that you mentioned reselling, because that's the second hard truth, believe it or not. Most people... Unless they're a hardcore anime fan. And let's let's be real. Anime fandom waxes and wanes in your personal life. Like, we've been consistent and pretty much bought in manga since we've been in the hobby. But there's definitely been periods of more intense buying and reading and less intense buying more and reading. More intense being now. Yeah, more intense being now. <laughs> and, you know what? This is an exaggeration. This is not everybody. Some people have drug habits. Some people go to jail... Some people accumulate too much debt, and for whatever reason, they have to get out of the hobby, liquidate their books, and all of this stuff. So, other than keeping it in decent condition so you can get better resale value, you may not even own the manga long enough for it to matter that you've kept this museum-quality copy of a particular most, manga. I mean, along with that hard truth, most of your uh, manga are not going to be resellable. Like... People just That's true. don't want it. That's true. And, oh, he, I didn't even write this down, but here's another hard truth. How much you think you're going to get for it? Like, this reminds me, like, the way people talk about preserving their manga, it reminds me of what I like to call the chromium age of American comic books. So this was the period in the 90s where you had to wear gloves when you're reading your death of Superman. And <laughs> Superman's dead. This this book is going to be worth a bajillion I'll dollars. I'll be able to put my kid through college on this book. Yeah, you could go and buy the death of Superman off eBay for like two bucks. Probably less than that if you go to a comic book shop. Maybe. I, I think it's in the quarter bin at our local comic book store. Okay, here, I, yeah. I, I want to say one thing, though. Even though, yes, most copies probably won't matter if they're kept in pristine position. Like, I still don't blame you for trying to do it, though, because... Well, yeah, no, that's, that's it's personal so to preference yes, to, look, to keep your stuff in good condition. Definitely, I'm not. This is not an advocation of don't give a shit about your manga. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying people are putting a little too much importance. Don't on freak it. out about it. Yeah, just um, kind of be like mildly worried about it. So, 
we'll flex a little bit here. I think the most expensive manga we own, off the top of my head, is probably Domu. Oh. A, oh, it's yeah. a it was it's by a popular creator, uh, Katsuhiro Tomo, the same creator of Akira. Very much. Wasn't I think it had two print runs in the U.S. Once as like individual floppies, and one as a Tonko Bond format. Yeah, I mean we got our copy before we were married. Yep. You know, so that was forever ago. Um, I think on a good day you can catch it on eBay for a hundred and fifty. Really? Hmm. That's a decent price. I'm not saying one hundred and fifty dollars is nothing. We're not letting them eat cake. Or the vast we're not, majority of our manga are all. You ain't you ain't even buying a college textbook for one hundred and fifty dollars. There's some hard truth. The vast majority of our manga are all cover price or lower. Right. You get a few gems here and there, but it's such at the whims of so many things. Like, is it a side book that a creator did that no one knew about, so it didn't sell? Like, Fire Punch is a good example. Um, that Chainsaw Man's blowing up. That could start. That could start going up because it wasn't printed as much. Though it's uh, Viz and they like to make money, so they reprint. So, I mean, maybe that's not the best example. The value of a manga is dependent on a lot of factors. Because something could be rare, but no one could care about it. But something could also be rare and and people could really care about it. It just kind of That's true. It's all random. So, don't think that you're investing in paper futures by uh, (laughs) getting these. And then the last hard truth is... Under moderately ideal conditions, right? Like, you're not abusing your manga. You're not doing the best you can. You're doing something like what we're doing. We're putting it on the shelves, sitting it and forgetting. We, we take a few of the considerations I'm talking about here, and and that's it. If you do the, relatively okay. If you do that, the manga and the paper will outlive you. And that is going to be the subject of the treat at the very end of this video. So there we go. We've kind of set this up. We've talked about some hard truths. So let's just start talking about the damage that your manga is in danger of incurring by being in storage and all that. And we've already talked about it. It's the number one thing people talk about. And let's talk about the yellowing of pages, kind of like we talked about here in our opening example. Why do these pages yellow? See, this is the thing that I don't think a lot of the manga tubers talk about. Why these uh, pages yellow? So, believe it or not, paper up until the mid-19th century was not printed on wood or wood pulp or whatever, right? It was printed on cotton, papyrus, things like this. Stuff that had a much longer shelf life. But, I mean, think about it. The Constitution isn't on paper. That's true. I think it's on linen um, or something. I don't know. I think sheep it's on skin. sheepskin. Yeah. But, but whatever. I mean, almost everything that, that we write on as humans other than tablets, stone tablets, is made out of paper. But in the uh, 1850s, a Canadian and the German kind of co-invented wood pulp paper. Okay? Now, wood pulp is comprised of mostly two things, cellulose and lignin. And we're going to pick on lignin here for a minute. It is the number one reason why your book's yellow. Okay? So lignin is a uh, polymer structure. That means that its molecules are in a uh, reoccurring uh, pattern. But it is very susceptible to oxidization. This is where it grabs oxygen and it forms uh, chromophores. Okay. So normally in nature, this lignin and cellulose is going to be a white, off-white. But as it starts grabbing these oxygen and fr- uh, forming uh, chromophores, It'll absorb every wavelength of light except yellow, which is why your books look yellow. Okay. Why didn't you grab yourself one of your uh, fancy pipes to make it look more professorial as uh, you were saying that? I should have. I should have worn the tweed jacket. Yeah. With the elbow that, pads. That was a lecture. Yeah. But interesting. <laughs> Yes. Now, interesting. I didn't know that. He, here's the uh, here's the thing. Now, it's easy to vilify lignin and like, why would you even put this in your paper, right? Because if it's known to do all this stuff, well, lignin is actually a good thing for certain applications. Uh, cardboard has high amounts of lignin because what lignin does is it strengthens the wood and the wood byproducts. So cardboard is where you're using high amounts of lignin to keep it sturdy. And uh, lumber has high amounts of lignin. Apparently, a tree could only grow roughly six feet tall without lignin. So, it is an important chemical, 
um, but it's bad for what we use it for. Now, just like comic books in America, just like paperbacks in America or all around the world, it's all about being cheap. So people with lower means, I don't want to say kids because manga and comics aren't really for kids anymore, but it's for people with lower amounts of disposable income. So it's being made on the cheap, right? So um, They're not being is, made to be collectibles. That's true. And some are, and we're, we're going well, to get to that. some are, but... We're going to get to that. We're getting there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon. we got to pace ourselves. Well, I understand. But I'm just saying, like, that was not made to be a collectible. It was meant to just be re read. Yeah, and it's printed on newsprint, which is a much cheaper paper. Well, that's slightly higher than newsprint. Okay, but... It's close enough. It's close. Like, this is going to have a higher lignin count because newsprint doesn't go through a bleaching process. So you can remove a lot of lignin and uh, make it inert by um, bleaching the pulp before turning it into paper. And your higher end books are gonna go through this bleaching process. So generally speaking, the wider your paper is when you buy it, the longer it's going to remain that way. Now it won't remain that way forever because we still have to talk about cellulose, which we're gonna get back to. Science. But yeah. Um, it's this polymer, it's this depolymerization of um, lignin that uh, causes this. Now, it's important to know this process can take a day or two and under ideal conditions. Like this is not necessarily a years long process, which brings me to another point. You may be buying some of your manga already yellowed. I don't know if you need a zoom in. On maybe, this. maybe a little, little bit. bit. Maybe a little bit. This yeah. isn't an egregious as. Can you uh, put it up a little bit? Like that? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. So this is Sweat and Soap Volume 2 and Sweat and Soap Volume 5. So fairly new titles. This one is uh, newer, obviously. I should have got the Volume 1. But this Volume 2 is already yellowed. We bought it from. What do you, what do you want? What do you want well, no, because that's the top. The top is yellow. Oh, yes. And then but the, the sides bottom, or the bottom yes. are not. Yes. So why, why is this already yellowed? It's a new manga. What's going on with it? Um, uh, the oxid, the, the oxidization. Are we good? We're in focus. It was a little wobbly, but we're okay. good. Sorry. Okay. So the oxidization process can occur in as little as a few days under ideal conditions which is being exposed to high amounts of pure oxygen, which is probably not the case in the bookstore, but maybe, but ultraviolet light can cause this. And we're going to talk about UV more here. I was saying most businesses use um, fluorescent lighting, which oh, would we're, have... Oh, we're, we're getting there. Okay. Okay, so um, it only takes a few days for yellowing to occur, right? And normally top shelf is a good descriptor, right? Like if you go to a bar and you order top-shelf alcohol, that's some of the best you can do. You do not want top-shelf manga. <laughs> this this is usually caused by being stored on the top shelf and getting more exposure to the light. And let's be clear, any light will cause the uh, oxidization, uh, oxidization. Not oxidization. just fluorescent light. Not just fluorescent light. Any visible light, even infrared light, because I'm getting a little science here. If you think of the light spectrum, you have infrared um, here, then you have the visible light, then you have the ultraviolet light. So there's more energy on the ultraviolet light enabling these chemical processes. So, um, and it'll just happen all the time. Yes. So, um, another thing we have to come back to, and we're going to talk more about this, is lignin also contains carboxylic acid, which we're going to come back to. And then I should have pulled out an example of this, but. Um, I don't know if this will show up. Eh, no. I should have brought a manga here for a good example of this, but not all paper pulp is going to be equal. Different trees uh, will have different amounts of lignin in it. Maybe the way the they were churning the pulp, some batches of paper will have less of it, some won't. We have some other manga here that, I don't know, we have We Were There, still fairly white, is roughly as old as this. Yeah, maybe not, but whatever. Um, you can have some older books that are... Um, still pretty white. They're still pretty white. 
most likely they had lower lignin contents and it was just by accident nothing you could have planned for um it just happens so what can you do about this right um keep away from keep your manga stored in darker areas i mean of Um, course we're here in our basement yes it's gonna be darker down here we have one small window that doesn't really reach any of our books yes. directly. Yeah. yeah, and we don't do this perfectly. Like, you could put curtains up. Um, you want to block the light coming in, especially UV from the sun. Um, but just your lights in general. And I know Daughter Weeb will love this. This is an argument for always turning your lights off when you leave the room. Which because, you should. Which I said, any form of light will uh, do this. But here's the important thing light bulbs um there are three main types of light bulbs you have incandescent which are pretty much no longer sold um but those are the old ones where you would heat up a tungsten filament and it would emit light those are okay those emit a little bit of infrared light which infrared is a little bit harmful but it more it's more about heat that is uh paper is really sensitive to incandescents are mostly fine if you can find them um, this is an LED light. This is the gold standard, A, on your pocketbook, because these are cheaper to own over time. But they do not emit um, infrared radiation except at the source where the uh, action is happening in the electronics. Um, and they don't emit UV radiation. The so that's worst, why you want to have those? This is the gold standard. Incandescent is fine. but um, And this is if you want to do max preservation compact fluorescence or just fluorescent lighting in general is your enemy okay yeah Yeah. um now look as i said this will outlive you this is not like you're this isn't going to melt your manga like in indiana jones (laughs) if if y'all y'all know what i'm talking about but um so the way uh fluorescent lights work is you have a tube filled with uh, gas gaseous mercury and you're sending a current through it And then on the outside of the tube is a fluorescent uh, coating that once it gets excited by the energy, emits light. It also emits UV radiation, which UV radiation is detrimental to paper. It has higher excitability. And this is not even the last time we're talking about uh, UV here. Okay. Um, Okay. If you do that, a uh, UV nail art, don't do it near your manga. What are you talking about? Never mind. Oh. I was going to try to say something funny, but it wasn't funny. Uh, yeah. Got to be funny if you're going to chime in. Uh-huh. So, uh, let's put this under super unrealistic conditions. Super unrealistic. Yeah. If you wanted to prevent all yellowing of your manga, which is impossible, you would need to keep it in a vacuum chamber. Yeah. Or in a room filled with argon or some other inert gas like helium. No which, oxygen. No oxygen. But good luck going and getting your manga wearing your NASA space suit. <laughs> this is all to say yelling is going to happen. You can slow it down over time by doing some of these things. I assure you it is not a myth that manga will not that yell. Really, out. That really grinds your gears, uh, doesn't it? Well, it's like someone saying flat earth. Like, it's... it's, it's it, uh, I just, it's hilarious you've been talking about it to me, and every time you say it, it's just like, it's not a myth. Okay. It, okay. I, look. That almost hit me. Daughter and I agree with you. It is All not right. a myth. So, I did mention that during the oxi- oxidization, oxidization, I should have looked up how to pronounce that. Oxidization? Oxidization. Oxidation. Oxidation? Of the lignin uh, also releases carbolic acid. Which is another thing we're going to talk. We're going to transition to just saying the word acid should give uh, you a good gives you little yeah. So paper contains acid. All wood products contain acid. Yeah. So your books are slowly eating themselves. (laughs) Um, Along with carboxylic acid, it also has. I feel like that could be a manga. What the the manga is trying to eat itself? Yeah. I no no. This is this is twenty twenty one. So the title has to be. Uh, that one time I was reincarnated as a manga and the acid was slowly eating me. <laughs> That's funny. That would be the title. <laughs> um, Is it okay to be eat- eaten by your own acid? Let's find out. That'd be the subtitle. No, 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 no. 
Is it okay to be eaten by acid as long as it's a cutie? <laughs> anyway, along with uh, carboxylic uh, acid, paper pulp also contains sulfonic acid and uronic acid. What? Just more and more acid. More and more acid. But hey, it gets worse. You know what else is full of acid? Yay! What else is full of acid? Hair! Ah! <laughs> You're Air sucking on that acid. acid right now. Well, because you have cars driving, there's um, acidic particles. Now, keep in mind, um, acid isn't really that thing you see in movies where you pour it out and it eats a hole in the well, table. Well, I mean, it, I mean it, it is. It can be, but most acids, like orange juice is acidic, right? And we, we drink that, right? So, um, it all depends there's on all... Remember, they used uh, lemon on... Uh... The Declaration of Independence in National Treasure. Oh, yeah, to see the secret yeah. map on the Oh, my God. That means they probably were ruining the, uh, yeah, the Constitution. The Constitu- that or the was, Declaration of Independence. Oh, yeah. That movie was not very good. I had to watch it in class once. It was, what? That was a fun movie. It, 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 it was okay. It but was, if you're, I guess if you're being forced to watch it in class. All movies suck when you watch them in class. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, just your normal air has acid, acidic particles in it. Now, we're talking stuff, so like on the pH scale, if you don't know, 1 through less than 7 is acidic, over 7 is uh, alkaline, and right in the middle, or base, and then right in the middle is your 7, which is your neutral pH. So we're talking that these particles are like 6 and some change, but it's just acidic enough to, over time, your paper is going to crumble. None of this stuff is permanent. Now... This could take a thousand years, which goes back to uh, the manga will outlive you. But don't kid yourself. There is acid everywhere. And now let me ask you this. Everywhere. What is the number one place people store their manga? Shelves. What are most shelves made out of? Wood. Wood has acids in it. So you're Acid getting, is everywhere. You're getting cross-contamination from your wood shelves um, so keep them on plastic shelves. Actually, no, plastic shelves are gross. Don't do that. No, actually, if you did want to be optimal, you would want to store them on metal or plastic shelves. Metal, you would want to be careful that it's not steel, because steel rusts. Rust is oxid is a oxidation. So you're learning. All I, kinds I told of you my suggestion last night is if you really want to be extra careful in your wood shelves, you can get acid-free mat board and put it underneath like as a layer on your shelf and then put your books on that you could now obviously we do not do that that's okay. not something that we would do no so if we're, we're just saying stuff. if you're deluding yourself and thinking that you're gonna have this pristine manga collection you want to go archival for a thousand years these, these are you're gonna the things go you big brain. Do. so now i guess i should have asked this why is acid bad to paper oh well i would think well, that would be obvious other than lignin what was the other thing I mentioned paper is made up of? Cellulose. The acid will destroy the cellulose, which contributes to a browning of the paper. So the cellulose, though, is the What's organic... The cells. Well, yeah, they're organic. organic. But I'm just saying it's the organic cells of the plant material. That is my understanding. All right. That that's makes sense why it would brown, then. For an, um, actually right there to correct <laughs> But, I mean, that's that's why it yes. would brown, because it's an organic material and, that's breaking down. And when the cellulose breaks down, it, it leads to brittleness of mm. the paper, which leads to cracking and tearing. Ripping. And then you have all kinds of stuff, which um, I might be getting ahead of myself. But if your paper is brittle due to cellulose breakdown from uh, acid, don't tape it. Tape is another so, as a source of acid. You you can get archival tape. Yeah. But everything I was reading was saying, unless it's a very bad tear, just it's better to not tape than to tape. Which and there so. are different kinds of archival tape. So depending on how uh, archival you'd want to be, there are ones that you can go to a craft store and get an, an acid-free tape, and that's still going to have like a plastic mm. clear. That you would put it down, but a truly, truly archival tape is going to be like a paper tape with an acid-free, or not acid -free. Well, it would have an adhesive on it that's not going to eat away at the paper. Yeah. But that would be now, very difficult to apply. And, if, and I think, as I said, if you wanted to be super archival and super preserve your be manga, 
you would want to use non-organic shelves, plastic, metal, like I already mentioned. Um, and you can actually stuff tissues in between each pages because tissues, and they sell other kind of paper for this purposes. Now, this is meant for like the Magna Carta. This isn't meant for... <laughs> Your uh, Snow White with the seven dwarves. Red you mean your Galgo? <laughs> Shut up. Yes. So the red you mean, you mean your Galgo, Han. Your yeah. Saki the Succubus. Yeah, you don't want to put tissue paper in between Maybe each you do page. want to put tissue paper no, in no, between no, each no, page no, of Saki no, the Succubus. No, 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 we're not going there. <laughs> she just went there. <laughs> no. Change them out after use. Anyway. No! 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 Oh, poor but, daughter. No. But, but tissue paper is, uh, from my understanding, is uh, is an alkaline, so it's going to balance out the pH. Well, you got to make sure it actually says acid free. Sure. When you buy it. And then uh, I think they sell carbon paper to put in between. Again, you're not going to do this. Are you realistically going to put the special paper in between each and every page of your manga? Of course. To prevent. Yeah, so well, actually, okay. that isn't even practical because if you start doing that, then your binding is going to start spreading apart because you're putting something between You know, page. you guys are on fire. We didn't even plan this. That is a great segue because let's talk about binding. This is the real thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a yellow page snob. Like, on Instagram, I talk about not buying books because they're too yellow. Look, you want to start with it. as pristine as you can. That's true. But here's one thing that I've learned. This is where I feel our val our video is adding value to the community because we've been collecting for like 20 years. We've bought books that were pristine at the time, and then now they're starting to have some problems. And let's talk about right. one of the first manga I've ever bought. What? She just zoomed in one. Okay. Well, hold up on that zoom because this, this isn't even what I want you to zoom in on. Let's talk about bindings, okay? Look at the binding on that. Can you see... How it's black at the corners, yep. and yeah, uh, look at that. and yeah. like the actual cover isn't sitting in on this. Now, did I take the absolute best care of this manga? Probably not. It was I one of my first. We ones. even had two at the time, and we kept the one that was in the better condition. Yeah, and now I read this over the summer, so it's a completely legible copy. This is fine. I can still You were see. worried about it, like, pulling apart, though. Yeah, like, I, I can't show this without damaging the manga further, but some of the pages are wanting to come out of the binding. Mm. So let's talk about bindings a little bit. From the best of my knowledge, here's a wide-open shot for the um actuallys. Uh, most manga are bound using the uh, polyurethane reactive adhesive method, or perfect binding. Okay? So... What they do is they load up a machine with these like plastic pellets that are heated up and then they run the uh, manga over it, uh, over the loose pages. And it ba it's basically hot glue, essentially. Mm -hmm. It puts it on there and um, it keeps the uh, pages together. You can put the uh, cover on it and it's all good to go. That's the perfect binding method. There's some problems with the perfect binding method. So it's not so perfect then, is it? It's not, Yeah, perfect binding is not so perfect. Perfect for cheap printing. Perfect for cheap printing. Now, I will say poly, uh, polyurethane adhesive binding is better than the next method we're going to talk about. But um, it doesn't have acid in it. That's the best uh, thing about it. However, depending on the type of polyurethane they use, microbes will eat it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So... These will fall apart over time. Like, how good is this going to be with your super white pages when the binding is just eaten away by bacteria and mold and all that? So Get your vacuum seal today. Yeah, go vacuum seal it. But then you have anaerobic bacteria. I mean, look, I don't know all the super science behind <laughs> perfect binding, but it is susceptible to microorganism degradation. So, And this is our experience. Like, I, again... Hopefully the 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 janked you could, you could up binding on that. Okay, so these pages, I mean, they're yellow, but like the interiors are fairly white. Like this, like is, the edges are yellow. This would be a perfect like if this binding were perfect, it would be a perfectly good manga. Yeah, like, I got some covered. Man, in the stuff, frustrating like, part is that was probably the better copy because we, we had, had two it, yeah. copies at the time. Yeah, because you were collecting and I was collecting, and then yeah. when we moved in together, we're like, we don't need we don't two need copies. Two. <laughs> Right, and we kept the better one, but 
Um, binding is something you have to worry about. Now let's talk about a binding that's not as good. And that is the uh, the DFAB. That's what I'm calling it, the DFAB. DFAB. Yeah, the double fan adhesive binding method. Now... Fancy smant. Oh, man, I forgot to talk about these in the intro. We're going to come back to these. Okay. I forgot to. I meant to talk about them in the intro, but I flubbed my notes. Did you... So the bottom one, did you forget to talk about that one? No, no. These are in order of as I have them in my notes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I think you're going to find the DFAB mostly on hard covers, which are becoming more and more popular these days, like all these Jinji Ito books they're getting this treatment. They're all hardback. Um, well, they were soft cover. These are reprints that are hard, uh, hardback. Now, you can do this. There. What? <laughs> Anyway, you can do the DFAB method with softbacks or hardbacks, but from what I was seeing, that this is more of a hardback uh, method. Are you saying more quality hardbacks? Or... Yes. Okay. Um, or it's just cheaper. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's, it's lower quality hardbacks. So what they do is they'll have the pages, and they'll have it in some sort of press, and pretend that the cover's not on here. Actually, let me try to do it with my note cards. They'll put it in some sort of press. They'll fan it like both ways, apply glue to it, and then stick the cover on. Or they stick a piece of the cloth binder. on it. Well, yeah, they yeah. put the glue, the binding agent, but then they put a piece of cloth over it, mm -hmm. and then they put the glue on the cloth. So I don't know if you'll need a zoom in, but if you look here, you'll see like a little black something or another. It's like Tilt a little it up just a little. I Maybe mean, if you used your other book, you could see it better. I, I mean, you can kind of see it. Well, let's see if... Uh, yeah, because yeah, this one's that, red. That's bigger, and it's red. So you're talking about the red fabric yeah. part. Yeah, that's like a piece of fabric yeah. that is being glued to the paper yeah. um, to form the binding. Now, this is a good method for, like, reading. It makes it very flexible, um, which I think is the main draw to it. But guess what kind of glue they use? What glue do they use? They use PVA, which stands for polyvinyl acetate. Is acetate. that why they put the fabric first and so they're gluing the, the acid part to the fabric or is the acid still on the I don't know I, the, the research that I had did not answer that question okay. but PVA glue is used nine times out of ten which is acidic so I mean, you're introducing name, another wah, wah. you're introducing another source of acid now good news I don't know what viz type of glue viz used there is archival quality PVA glue that has a neutral pH I don't know if that's one was used here, but it when is. you're talking about bindings, these are things that are um, putting you uh, under duress. So what? Can, there's not much you can do about the actual binding, okay? Other than proper handling, um, obviously don't like. Uh, was it spatchcock your uh, <laughs> manga? <laughs> don't do that. Hold it, you know, when you're reading it, if you can, or if you're, like, laying on the bed. Um, what is it we saw? Oh, I'm, getting, I'm okay. getting to that. Uh, yeah, let's just talk about the pillow method real quick. So, one of the things that we saw about the proper way to um, handle hard covers, like, especially thicker ones. or even, Really old ones. Yeah, or even, like, those super, like, uh, Paradise Kiss, that, like, five-in-one. Mm. Why would so, you do that? Ugh. Hopefully this is pretty no, good. No, you're fine. Frame. You take a pillow to support the spine, and let's get Tommy A because this is like that's the a, thickest that's part a bigger, I have. Big boy. You put it on here so we're supporting the uh, spine, and you can look. Like, there's some kind of some boobies right there. Let's. Uh, <laughs> you can't really see it. You're fine. Bitty. But see, it's holding it open for me. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle. And then what you can do is you can get straps or other like soft paper weights, and you can hold it down so you're not spatchcocking. The spine. <laughs> I didn't know about this method. I wanted to share it all with you um, because there's not much you can do with binding. Whatever they chose to bind it with, you're stuck with. Now, but we were seeing this angling. on like a really old, large. Oh, I will I link mean... that video. We were listening to a conservator from New Zealand who really went into that. And he was even talking about um, white gloves and all that. Oh, kind of yeah. Stuff. It, Sure, wear white gloves if you want to when you're. But he was talking about like when you're grabbing your manga on the shelf, don't grab it and pull it out that way. They were saying to kind and like, of like don't even pull it from the side. Yeah, don't pull it. So like, there's like a little indention here. Hopefully that's showing. Yeah, up. yeah. yeah um, like, don't grab it like there. You want to grab it from here, rock it back, and then get a firm grasp, and then pull it out. Now and then also, 
what was it leave a gap behind so that you can um, put your hands behind to pull it out that way? Yes, I think I have that in my notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate leaving a gap. I always want yeah. to push it back as far as possible. Yeah, I, actually, I skipped over that note. Yeah, when you're storing these on your shelves, leave a little uh, breathing room for it to uh, air out. Some of my shelves are a little more tightly packed than others, but I try to leave a little bit of breathing room. You know, that will help prevent accidental binding damage from you pulling it off the shelf. Um, but there we go. Oh, the one thing I did want to mention about binding, the gold standard in binding. I don't need this light bulb anymore. The don't gold bulb. standard in binding is sewn binding. Okay. I don't know if I can get a good example of this without spatchcocking. If you look really hard, you should be able to see like little holes in Hold the spine. On. Yeah, you yeah, can kind of. Kind of. Right there. I mean, okay. it's kind of hard to see. It's hard. Well, it's white threads and all this. Yeah. This book is a sewn binding. This is the gold standard. Um, though I'm sure it's going to find out that the yarn they use to sew it has acid in it. But uh, <laughs> but it's it's easy to get thread that's an acid-free type thread. Yeah. So that's the gold standard. I'm going to keep Chobits here because I want to come back to it here in a minute. Um, let me go over the part that I skipped in the uh, intro. And I think it'll fit here. Kind of. A lot of the uh, archival uh, tips that a lot of people are uh, thinking about when they're talking about manga preservation, they come from their experience with this. Comic this book. is an American comic book. And floppy. the way you... Yeah, floppy. The way you store these is obviously going to be different than how you store this. Yes. I don't okay. know why you would have put the two. Well, but that's what they did. Like, I even have... Let's pick on Crying Freeman again. Now, I bought this used. I don't know if this was how it was kept or it was just done this way for shipping. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But you would see manga like this in the early 2Ks when we got into it. Where you would see it on a shelf and they would do it like this. Where you have the back... Uh, the comic book back and inside of plastic. So an acid-free board at the back. If you're lucky, an acid-free board. If you're, yeah, if you're lucky, an acid-free yeah. back. Well, that's what you're... If you're properly storing mm. an America-style comic, it you should do. be an acid-free mm. um, bag and an acid-free board. Yeah. So um, I wish I would have had one of these because I've had someone looking through some of our old American comics. But if you don't have acid-free backing, the inks will leach... Onto the board. We went through and we took all those out. Yeah, I know, which I wish I had one to show oh, off. Oh, to, to show off the boards? Yeah, yeah, those were hilarious. Yeah, so I don't know why people think this is a good idea. Like, it, it's not. Well, it's not, okay. We've already shown we that talk the bags about, don't prevent yellowing. If we talk about, like, 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. original, like, storage of American style comics, they were thinking more along the lines of, I need to keep this straight, yes. not that I need to keep this acid-free. Yes, which is why this is a proper way to store an American comic. So why do you need the board, is it? To keep it straight. Well, because you normally keep them in a box. Upright. This will be upright, and even if it goes a little bit, it's mostly straight. What about if I do this, you can get it, it'll bend like that. Oh, I see. So you want now, to they can still straight. bend if they're not stored properly. But yes. if they're stored properly. But you're storing these, like, in a file box, yes. essentially, right? You're not storing them on a shelf, mm -hmm. right? So, a lot of the misconceptions on how to take care of manga come What's that from like? this. Oh, and if you want to... This is just a show-off. This is a little bit of show-off. But, like, a little bit of this is, like, maxing it out for American-style comics, with our Uncanny X Men issue one, well, this is more like mommy's actually. Gonna fly. It's, mommy it's is, not actually. It is. It is. Yeah. It if is. we were to be divorced, she would take this in the divorce. But um, yeah, we have an X Men issue one. So this is from 1963. 1963. Still perfectly readable. It does have some wear and tear. But on that, it that's from, from before things. it was ever stored. Yeah. So you think about it. It is in a acid free bag, bag with an acid free board, board with a stiff. Top loader, top sleeve. loader sleeve, so acid it will free. not. It is also acid free, yeah. so it will not bend. Mm -hmm. But that's the point. Like the whole point of the board and the uh, top loader is so that it won't bend. Your yeah. model is not really bend particularly. Well, it's not going to bend in the same way. Well, and the main sources of bending are so For preventable. Reading. Like if you see at Barnes and Noble, you'll see shit like that on the shelf. Like, like obviously, you... don't do that. I feel. I actually think I wrote that down as a tip, but I'm like, why do we even need to say that? That's so... Well, look at your Gal Gohan right there. Well, that's because I took... Yes, I know. Yeah. 
But yeah. that's, that's the problem. Don't, if you, don't do this. If you left it like that, that's right. where you're going to get your bending. Put it back oh, in. Oh, put it back in. Be a good yes. example. Be a good example. Yeah, pretend that you're that the that the that your viewers are your children. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. You hit mom that time. I'm spreading out the love. All right, so let's just talk about general storage hazards in general and what you can do about them. Ideal storage, according to this really smart New Zealand guy I was listening to, <laughs> is uh, 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We use Fahrenheit. They use metric. Um, and you want a relative humidity of around uh, 50% or less, okay? And... Try not to store your manga in your attic, which I've never even heard of someone storing manga in an attic. But I think they were talking about just general books that books people put, put in the attic. Out. Pictures, now, things. Now, here's where we're setting a bad example. They also said no basement. Okay. Yeah, but, we do get a lot of leaks down here. So that probably doesn't help for you. Well, no, no. We're actually going to address those. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I keep them in the basement. Now, here's another opportunity for, my, for a numb, actually, is that I had heard that um, basements offer superior fire protection. Now, fire should be like one of your number one concerns when it comes to dangers of your manga. A, f a house fire will destroy your uh, collection way faster than acid wear or lignin uh, oxidation over time. Um, but being in a basement offers fire protection because they typically start on upper floors and you can either put it out before then or like it'll take a while to burn down into the basement. At that point, you have to worry about the firefighters putting in water. Yes. Um, which is why, even though we do it in the basement, which isn't super ideal, we do have a dehumidifier that I broke and need to fix. But Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. We, do, <laughs> we do try to keep it. I think when I had it running, I tried to keep it at like 30% relative humidity. As long as you're below that 50%, it seems to be. If, you're ba if you have your well. humidifier going and your basement feels kind of warm... Yeah. You're good. Dehumidifier. Or your dehumidifier yeah. is going. It feels kind of warm. Mm -hmm. You're good. Now, another problem with it basement. Is cold down here. Is, yeah. Now, and you also don't want extreme temperatures. So, like, right around 70 is ideal. I think colder is better than hot because hot means more energy for oxidization. Oxidation. Um, now, basements obviously present the problem of water. Water does not do well with uh, paper, or paper doesn't do well with water. Um, they, when you, they, they say to keep your shelves at least, um, 150 millimeters high. That's roughly six inches. That one is not good. That's behind you. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, so that's something else you want to be aware We're not perfect here. Okay? I didn't say we yeah. were. I didn't say we were. Um, another issue that people don't even think about. I didn't even think about this until I was reading, which is microorganisms, specifically mold. And this also plays into the water moisture uh, element to this. Um, so you want to make sure you keep your uh, books in uh, less humid places. I think they need 70% relative humidity to start thriving mm. um, for my research. Um, That's pretty high, though. Along with microorganisms, let's talk about macroorganisms. Mm. Insects and pests. Mice love to eat paper. Um, certain insects like cockroaches and silverfish love to eat paper. So you want to That's keep super your... weird. Yeah. Well, well they, I mean. They nest in it and all what, that. Well, well, yeah, one is nesting, but think they're made of, it's made of wood. You can yeah. eat it. I mean, I guess. Termites, I guess, is, might be something. Um, so those are some things you want to worry about. And now let's just talk about some general things. Your finger oils are a source of damage. Um, to paper. So wash your hands. Wash your hands. Like if you're being super anal about your stuff, um, That's not gonna be wash your hands. Makes sense to do. Wear gloves if you really feel like it. Um, dust regularly, hands. which we're bad at not dusting. Dust yeah. creates an abrasive effect on the books that can uh, wear down over time. Um, bookmarks. Don't leave bookmarks in your thing. That's another source of acid. Um, for the page, or if they're too thick, you can warp the uh, binding. Mm -hmm. So be careful with your bookmarks. Now, so I kind of started this off complaining about bags. And after doing all this research, here's where I've come down on bags. 
They're not going to stop yellowing. That is a delusion. Get it out of your head. Um, Because you're going to have air trapped in the bag. Well, just as an example to use the American comics again. Yeah. The reason why... If you opened up the Max, Mm -hmm. you would see that the pages were still white because they started out as a more acid-free paper to begin with. Well, maybe not this one, but Revenge of Cosmic Ghost Rider. They're American comics now print on gloss paper. Yeah, and it's more more acid-free compared to the X Men one. Yes, it's it's more it's older, but it's also standard newsprint. newsprint. Yeah, it's going to yellow Mm -hmm. faster. Um, But here's where I've ultimately come down on bags. They're going to help you against some things. They will help you with a little bit of moisture. They might help you against some insects. I don't know if a, a cockroach will eat through the plastic. They might. I don't know. Probably my specul- not. Speculating. It might help prevent some mold spores getting in there. So bagging your manga has a place. But here's some things to be concerned with with bags. Um, the gold standard is mylar. Mylar bags. Mylar will not, the, the bonds in the plastic will not break down over time uh, the way other ones do. Um, but Mylar is super expensive, so there's that. Um, most bags that you're going to find on the market are made of polypropylene. These are better, like this is a polypropylene bag. There's nothing wrong with it. They recommend you change these out every 7 to 10 years. You do not. Because they will break down. And I forget, there's another poly... Uh, bag that they used to use in the 80s um, and I've changed some of these out but they, they'll turn sticky and break down into like They're not really quite gross. a yeah not quite a liquid but they will they get break wavy down. and yeah yeah um, so when you're using these polypropylene is okay mylar is better but mylar is uber expensive I don't even know if they make mylar bags for manga but you would have to maybe. look for you'd have to look for preservation of old books so, if you want to, look, bagging isn't completely useless, but it's definitely not the silver bullet some people uh, think that it is. A free box would probably be better. Uh, probably. And so, uh, let me just put two more notes on here before we finish up here. Really what you want to do when you're preserving your manga, more than what you're actually doing to physically store it, is you're trying to preserve the information. You're trying to preserve the stories so you can you know, enjoy them for years to come, right? That's what we're ultimately trying to do is preserve our enjoyment, right? But there's other ways to do that that don't involve uh, vacuum chambers and (laughs) all of this stuff, right? First of all... Just the Domo, right? Yeah, just the Domo. Um, Buy digital. Yeah. Like... uh, Digitize it. If you're going to freak out about it, you might as well do digital. Yeah, digital will always be there, quote-unquote... Um, it's copied easily. I, you will have your digital books. Okay. And I know that takes a shift in attitude because remember, it's like a boob. You want to hold it in your hand and not see it on the screen, but you gotta, you gotta change that mentality. And the other thing you can do to preserve the stories over time is you just buy the reprints. Okay. Like, uh, well for daughter, I this was this was her first one, before. which is another great thing about reprints. It's letting another generation read the stuff. Like uh, Crying Freeman, this was originally published like in the late seventies, eighties, or something like that, right? So this is a reprint from the original. So reprints let people get to experience it for the first time, but this will last longer than the Tokyo Pop printings just because it was printed later. Um, also, reprints give companies a chance to print it on nicer paper. This paper is quite white. Super white. Uh, it's blindingly white. Yeah. So this paper has probably been bleached uh, beforehand. Um, it has sewn binding. Hopefully these are acid-free uh, backs. I, I don't know. Or not backs, I mean, but boards. The boards yeah. could be acid-free. But... Yeah. This copy is a superior printed product than this. It's going to last a lot longer. So reprints like companies... Do the super popular manga that people really want to preserve over time. No one's preserving Saki the Succubus for years to come. That's just um, a tissue user. And don't be afraid to double buy stuff. Like, we have uh, Mermaid Saga. This is just one of the volumes. But we bought the reprint, right? Now, I think this isn't printed on better paper, but like... 
It's newer. I think it has a better thing. It's got that fancy French fold. Which it's actually was, numbered? Yeah, it's actually numbered on the side. Um, so don't be afraid to buy multiple copies if it's something you want to preserve the can. story for. If you have the money. Of course, everything. I mean, come on, this is a luxury hobby. Yeah. No one's buying this to eat, right? Like, it's so, okay. Except for termites. Termites the, would buy that so they could eat it. Yeah, there's some whiteness difference there. Yeah, we saw that. So, Very um, there we go. Hopefully this has been somewhat educational. Uh, almost everything you do is futile. The stuff is going to decay one day, but it's going to outlast you, which we're going to do the preview here in a second, but uh, that's going to be the topic. We're going to show you the oldest piece of sequential art in our collection. Um, so let's, on three, let's do it. One, two, three. Here's, Here's the, the preview. preview. So next video, which I guess I should say, I'm trying to think of the dates here. This actually won't be the next video. The next video is going to be the haul video. Oh. The very next one. Yeah. But our next regular release schedule, which is every other Tuesday, which we're experimenting with maybe changing Might be that. changing it. But for right now, it's every other Tuesday. But our next regularly released uh, video is going to be a book discussion on this new title, Golden Japanesque. Because it's not 100% Japanese. It's Japanese-esque. So, yeah. And it's shoujo. We're, we're forcing Yeah, because apparently everyone gets a kick out of forcing me to read shoujo. Like, I don't know why people are so interested in me going, this is bullshit. <laughs> But that's not. That's good stuff. Well, well, we'll see. It's by the same creator as uh, Kari First Love. Another old manga in our collection. One that I've actually read more than once. There you go. So you're breaking all you my rules. The, you can show the yellowing. <laughs> okay, so with that, we're going to take a field trip up to the Weed Family Parents basement, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so apparently I said we're taking a trip to the basement was actually yeah, your basement. bedroom. Yeah, what I meant to say is the Wee family bedroom. It all starts with a B. Come on, give me a break. So this is actually the oldest piece of sequential art that we have in our collection. Okay, so because I'm a good husband, this was my first year anniversary gift to mommy. So how long have we been married? I don't know. We're going For up a on while. we're going up on 15 years of marriage. I don't even think Daughter Weep was born yet when we I gave this to you. I think you were pregnant. I was pregnant. Yeah, I think I was yeah. pregnant. So this is older. Well, it's older than all of us. But uh, we've had our in our possession collection. of it is yeah. longer is older than Daughter Weep. So this is a uh, a newspaper comic of Little Nemo, a uh, an American uh, comic newspaper comic. Um, so. This will be a little bit uh, apples and oranges, and I admit that, but I just want to give this as an example of your comics and your manga will outlive you, okay? So if you want to zoom in on the day here, you might have to walk forward. This was published on July 28th, 1907. So this is coming up on 114 years That's old. That's right, because, yeah, birthdays and 100 years old when we got it. Yeah, so... Um, um, this is older than me or mommy weave. This is older than your mother and your grandmother, which is your great grandmother, who's yeah. a lovely lady, but she's in her nineties. Yeah. So this will outlive your lifetime. Now, what are some of the things that we've done to preserve this? Now, mommy weave's not an archivist, but she did work at a chain store doing some sort of archiving with framed pictures. So I'll let her talk about what we have going on here to maximally preserve this particular piece, which I know you can't do with the manga. That's not the point. But if you have like... When framing paper at you your say, local, yeah. or at your local craft store or whatever, more than likely they're going to offer you acid-free materials. And if they probably won't offer you non-acid-free materials, but if they did, they would be less expensive. Don't use that. Just, just don't. If it seems too cheap to be true. Like, look at how white these bevels are right here. That's how you know that it's acid free. Because when you get matting that has the turns yellow, that means it's not acid free. That's your lignin oxidization, mm -hmm. the oxidation that we're talking about. Um, so this is 
older than some of the manga. This is older than that sweat and soap we had. Mm -hmm. And this is bright white, and that was already mm -hmm. yellowing from the uh, store lights. So behind the newspaper are two things. One is acid-free foam board that creates your buildup and an acid-free matting. So that creates um, the backing so that you're not leaching acids from whatever your backing is. So you have acid-free foam board, acid-free mat on the back, like a, a full piece, and then you have your acid-free matting around it. Now, the thing that everybody's thinking about is, or I would be thinking about, is the glass. Now, most glass does not protect anything. It will protect it from water being spilled on it, possibly, but it will not protect it from light damage. You need to have UV protection glass. Otherwise, it will... Uh, the problem more than yellowing, what would actually happen would be fade. It would have fade so oh. much that you wouldn't be able to see anything. And I forgot to talk about this in the uh, video, but the reason why UV is so damaging to uh, paper is because it's higher energy, and what it's doing is it's knocking out the electrons out of their orbits and makes them less color reflective, and it can actually break down the molecules over time. So UV is such high energy that it's damaging the cells in the paper, which is actually why UV causes cancer in humans as well, because it's damaging the uh, molecular structure. Now, glass like this is not 100% UV. A glass like this is like 99% UV, but let me, because if it was 100%, you wouldn't be able to see through it. Now, this might be hard to capture, daughter, but like a way to tell that this is UV, if you see this light over here, this is fairly white. But now, let me bring it over here and look at the reflection of the light. See how it's blue? Uh, yeah. I mean, kind of show it on the wall again. Well, it's hard to see the actual lens well, or whatever. You that's can't. You can't but tell even, in the video. But even like up here, that's a yellow light, but it's appearing blue in the well, glass. Well, it's not even... Okay, so there are different kinds of UV protection glass, right? It's hard to so tell in the video. The real way to tell... I mean, that you, can, you can't tell when it's in a frame like this, really, because the way you would really know is if you take your piece of glass out and you would turn it sideways, the glass would actually look wavy. They would have these little tiny waves in it, and that's breaking up the glass to make it go, you know, the light doesn't hit it. Yeah. Um, the colorization that you're talking about, it does help with protecting against the UV light, but what that is actually doing is making it so you don't get reflection. Oh, so, so it's an anti-glare. It's an anti-glare, but it, mm -hmm. it, it does help. You're not going to have an anti-glare like that on a non-UV piece of glass. It's just not going to happen. So. And, um, the other thing is, it, you might have to get close on this again, like the actual newspaper will look a little wavy. This is not glued down. So when you when you put in the piece, in which I don't know, can you get up here? I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny plastic tab right there. That little plastic tab is what's holding it in place. And it's so close to the edge, it kind of shows through a little bit, but it's not something that's gonna ruin your piece to look at. But the reason why it's wavy is because you don't want it stuck down. Because as soon as you stick it down, that's going to create an acid bond that you don't want. And now, just to drive the point super home, we have preserved this as best as we could for sentimental value. I think I paid thirty dollars for the actual paper. Oh yeah, we put way book. more into yeah uh, preserving it. Preserving. I don't know what this would be worth. Um, it's I, I don't no one even knows who Windsor McKay is anymore, which is a shame because we wouldn't have anime without Windsor McKay. But um, he's a great visionary. You should look him up. Lo, read uh, Little Nemo sometime. If you can find it, there is a volume of all of his works collected into yeah. one. It's pretty neat. But um, yeah, we're preserving this for sentimental value. This isn't. We're keeping this because we think this is going to be in the Louvre one day, and <laughs> you know we'll buy us a mansion and a Maserati or anything. It's all sentimental. Some so, Gucci. Yeah. So, again, hard truth. Your manga will outlive you. So, there you go. Now that we've shown you off a bunch of cool stuff, let's sit back and wait for that six seasons in a movie. Six seasons in a movie.